And we're back for some tennis talk. We had the Australian Open decided on the men's and the women's side. Uh, two matches that weren't necessarily the firecrackers that we had seen earlier on in the tournament, uh, but it seems like the best player prevailed on both sides. And uh, I guess we'll start with the men's. Novak Djokovic winning his record ninth uh, Australian Open. And he is two away from 20. Uh, we have here he's won eight of the last 11, which is just absurd. Uh, yeah, he's closing in on Roger and Rafa as another guy who can add his name. If, if you're looking at the best men's player in the open era, he's definitely in the conversation. Uh, and yeah, just so lucky that we actually get to see three of the greatest tennis players of all time playing all at the same time right now. Yeah, I mean, the big big eyes on the French Open coming up now. Will Rafa, the king of clay, manage to pull ahead? And do, does he, what's still left in the tank for him? And it's so interesting because, I mean, Djokovic still a spring chicken compared to Roger and Nadal. So however much success they have this late in the career, Djokovic is ultimately going to have a chance to catch up with it. But yeah, I mean, he's got to be the favorite at every Australian and U.S. Open with the dominance he's had there, especially the Australian. Just absurd winning eight of his last 11. And he saved the best for last in this tournament. He dropped the last set he lost was the first set of his quarterfinal matchup against Zverev. And I mean... You look at uh, that semifinal matchup against Katsarov and maybe the stock, but the other two top 10 guys and just straight sets. I, I don't make me wonder why I even had a second of doubt about him in the first place. Just the number one player in the world right now, too good. And with this is going to be a really interesting Grand Slam year. I mean, if rafa can pull ahead king of clay keep it up can djokovic earn what would be i think only his second win at the french open then it gets real interesting uh wimbledon the big one whether it's one of those two or neither will be so fascinating um the the men's legacy competition that's going on right now is so good on its own and then when you add the other 20 like phenomenal talents that are just such a fantastic high level of competition yeah definitely awesome to watch these guys go at it i think we'll see a couple canadian kids insert themselves in at wimbledon hopefully and and probably at the u.s open uh they're a bit more hard hitters so i don't know how well they'll do on clay but um yeah wrapping up the hard court tournaments in the in the upcoming month uh will be interesting to see where they position themselves as we enter the uh, long summer months of the tennis season on the women's side we have uh the absolutely dominant right now naomi osaka winning her fourth grand slam title at the age of 23 And she takes down uh, Jennifer Brady of the United States. And, and she just, she's at the top of her game right now. She looks like the next great female star uh, on the tennis side. And is on a great pace right now to get somewhere near the Serena at the end of her career. Obviously it's really, really, really hard to maintain the level of play that Serena has done throughout her career. She's 39 now, sitting at 23 Grand Slam titles. Don't know if that'll ever be replicated in the Open era. Uh, but, hey, Osaka's on a great track, and, and congrats to her. She had a phenomenal tournament. Yeah, and then similar to Djokovic, the question is, can she translate that off the hard court into the other tournaments where she's struggled on? She had a great comment on that in the interview like the time is now i'm i'm hoping to get right back in there and i hope the french is like my first clay one which that's what she's going to need to do if she wants to even get close to matching serena's legacy which 
he's certainly on the right track to do so for now. Um, I mean, I think she's on like a 20, 21 match winning streak right now. So going to be interesting to see how far that momentum will carry. But yeah, I mean, not a coming out party for her because I think she's already there, but continuing that dominance and certainly the number one women's player in the world on hard court. Yeah, hats off to her. Uh, a little bit more news from from us is uh, Bianca. Leg injury, pulls out of the Adelaide Open and a couple of the other uh, tune-up tournaments for the hard court. Uh, and yeah, tough to see her once again, miss 15 months with her previous injury, finally gets back starting to look a little bit like herself. And then she falls prey to another injury. She's out for another couple tournaments. Hopefully she can heal quickly and be back, but it's, it's really tough to see her continue to struggle in recovery. And obviously we want her to want all the best for her, but uh, just, uh, very similar shades of Bouchard right now. Yeah. She's not she's not following the same path of uh vanity, I would say, if that is the right word. But yeah, it's just so unfortunate that these incredible Canadian tennis players uh have been struck down by some bad luck. And so hoping for a speedy recovery and that she'll be back in time for uh clay season and ready to kick some butt. Yeah, I think she's eyeing a return in mid-early March. And it seems like just a tactical decision this early in the tennis season. Doesn't want any wear and tear that's going to accumulate. So hoping to jump into clay season and the intense summer as fresh as she can. And I don't know, I mean, that similar decision making with her last injury, like she could have rush back sooner but chose to wait play the patient game you just hope that's going to work out and that when she does come back she's physically fresh and her game isn't rusty i mean incomparable in the size of the two layoffs but yeah something about canadian women's tennis seems to be a little cursed at the moment i mean with one grand slam she's already i guess outmatched Bouchard and that's always going to be huge for her but just the potential you see in her is like a top mainstay at the women's decision for a long time which is what people were saying about Jeannie at one point and so just to hear the similar comparisons and then see this injury is like you you can just see the potential for the tracks heading in a direction you don't want to think about if you're a fan of Canadian women's tennis. So, yeah. yeah, the other thing I'd say is Bianca's just so young. I think she's 20, 21. Uh, and so she's got a lot of time to get back on her feet and not even anywhere close to her prime. So hopefully we'll see her on the court sooner than later. For sure. Just the inj- the early injuries are troubling in, in all sports. When you see a career start off like that, there's too many players to name that have just the injuries happen and then they don't get back for a while and then it's never quite the same after. So I'm, this is a one month less, I think, layoff, but you don't like to see a return to injury so quickly. No, 